welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Ria Lena, Reese James and Ivo Graham, Maisie Adam, Hugh Dennis and Alistair Beckett-King. For the last two series of Mock the Week, I've started every show by reminding the audience that we're filming this under COVID regulations and our audience are on Zoom. Not anymore. An audience is in the room with us tonight. Hello, actual audience. Here with us tonight. <laughs> we have, however, kept the prospect dividers because we began to need them. <laughs> We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ivo, which category would you like? I would like world news, please, Dara. An excellent choice for a show like this. The answer is 1.5. What is the question? What number do I use when referring to a sit-down wee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it, uh, how many minutes into Squid Game would I claim to have brought a note from my mum? <laughs> Is it the average number of children Boris has per woman? <laughs> Is the question, what do serial killers bring instead of a plus one? <laughs> <laughs> How many minutes of COP26 has Joe Biden been awake for? <laughs> seconds into a party does Hugh mention that he was in the new James Bond film? <laughs> and how many seconds was he in it for? Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how many horsepower is one massive horse? <laughs> how many days in her entire life has Greta Thunberg spent at school? <laughs> How many people has Test and Trace successfully tracked down? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, uh, when introducing himself, how many times will James Bond say his own name? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it how many PhDs the average Asian has while still disappointing their parents? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you want me to bring us to the, uh, the correct answer? How many gift horses did I look in the mouth before I finally coined the expression, <laughs> never say boo to a goose? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is what... How many degrees centigrade are we trying to limit the increase in the world's temperature? That'll yeah. do fine. Thank you very, very much, yeah. Hugh Dennis. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the question I was looking for was, what is the maximum that global average temperature can rise before catastrophic climate change? This is news that at this year's COP26 in Glasgow, world leaders are being urged to honour the 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming target they set out at the 2015 Paris summit. Unfortunately, the planet is currently on track for a rise of 2.7 degrees, which the UN says will lead to a climate catastrophe. Well, that was a bit of a downer as an opener to the <laughs> The, are you confident the COP26 will have much or any effect on climate change? Well, it's a good idea to have it in Glasgow now, isn't it? Because Glasgow already has loads of the risks of climate change. You know, it already has, like, horrible weather and no access to fruit and vegetables. <laughs> and massively decreased life expectancy. Basically, the point of having it in Glasgow is to show the world leaders what it will look like if the world does end. <laughs> Yeah. Boris, as well, is, I mean, he's, he seems fully committed to combating climate change, and he said that, you know, for the world, it's one minute to midnight. And that, to me, doesn't seem to carry much weight coming from Boris, cos you think he has probably said that previously, but followed by the words, your husband's going to get home in a minute, but I'm still up for it. <laughs> Why does he speak like this, going, there's, it's one minute to midnight, he's also said that he thinks it'll help that the prince is there. Does he think he's in Cinderella? <laughs> What happens to Boris at midnight? The spell wears off and he turns back into a mop. <laughs> <laughs> he he, he mean, fell asleep, didn't he? This is not a great photograph. <laughs> Literally every nurse is wearing a mask <laughs> and awake. And it seems like they're the two, the two basic requirements for somebody yeah. sitting in the front row is wear the mask and stay awake. Even if you've got to put <laughs> cocaine in the mask, uh, just, uh, whatever you've got to do, do the thing, right? But that asleep, is. And Biden fell asleep as well. But in their defence, the heating was on really high in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who did US President Joe Biden attack on the eve of the COP26 summit? He went for the big boys, didn't he? He did. Russia yes. and China. Yeah. He went, Russia and China are absolutely... 
<laughs> so I shouldn't try anything there, was it? He, um, at least they're not... <laughs> <laughs> looks like, is he, it looks like he's just spotted Carrie talking to Jennifer Arcuri. <laughs> Putin came in via a video link, though, didn't he? Which was good. Basically, if all the world leaders are in a room and Putin's on a Zoom, everyone else is dying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but America themselves are doing quite well, aren't they? So they have... Biden has said that by 2030, 50% of vehicles in America will be electric. And Biden is leading the way himself. He's going to get there way ahead of that with his own personal vehicle, Mobility Scooter 1. <laughs> I agree that we shouldn't be, you know, that they're lecturing us about things. That, I mean, Boris lecturing us about commitments. He got, went off at the G20 about people making hollow pledges, or as he knows, the marriage vows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the same thing with Prince Charles. Prince Charles actually gave a speech saying that we all need to give something up. Us give something up. Why don't you give something up like your brother? <laughs> People slag Boris off, though, saying he's a hypocrite for private jet and all that. But remember, for years, he travelled to work on a zip wire, OK? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Net zero. And also, he does his bit for the planet, OK? He won't use condoms, cos they're single-use plastic. <laughs> Who did he reference in the speech as one meant to midnight speech? James Bond. It was James Hughes, Bond. Hughes' oh, best friend, James Bond. Hughes' best friend, James Bond. <laughs> I was watching it with my family, and the way I gasped when you appeared on screen, and also so on brand that your storyline was mainly based around some Tupperware soup. <laughs> <laughs> this is a spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it by now, you're too late. Hugh's character dies. He compromises Project Heracles, which is disgraceful. But most embarrassingly, he dies in a, in a gun battle where he's hiding behind a wall, and then he runs out from nowhere towards a microphone in the middle of a room, and that's how he's picked <laughs> off. <laughs> it was very devious of them to say, uh, things you wouldn't say during a gun battle. <laughs> I mean, it's so pretty. I mean, it literally for about 20 seconds. Oh, you make an impression. You make an impression. Cute. However, I... we also... We never see your body. Uh, and I don't mean, why did <laughs> you strip off of it? <laughs> I mean, after you get shot, we never... I mean, I think it's still there that you might have survived, have crawled from the wreckage. No. I no, think your really character... No. I don't no. know how you sat on it. I would have absolutely lost me. Imagine if that, if that had been me. I would have just been going... Tara, Tara. Name. Bar. Name. <laughs> 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 But, but Maisie, you and James Bond would be one of the funniest things in the world. Just a spy comes in and just goes, give me the nuclear codes. And you're just like, chuff it, hell, didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair play. Fair play. <laughs> yeah. You've asked nicely, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, when did I become Paddy McGuinness? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, as far as me and Ivo are concerned, about 27 years ago... <laughs> <laughs> Don't bracket me. Yeah, with it, yeah, I yeah. didn't attempt a Yorkshire slash Lancashire accent, Reese, because I knew I would fail. Not you now. You failed alone. Not now, but what were you doing in the rec room at Eton, mate? We know what you're up to there. <laughs> we weren't doing accents, our mouths were full. <laughs> I haven't seen the film, and I don't know which things you're saying are jokes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen, I've never yeah. seen a Bond film. I thought I'd seen Live and Let Die, but it turned out it was the government's COVID policy. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be said that in a film called No Time to Die, it is rather disappointing to die. <laughs> In addition to the delegates from around the world, who else has turned up uh, in COP26 in large numbers? Greta was there, wasn't she? Greta Thunberg Greta, was there? Greta was there, and then she was like, oh, but I haven't been officially invited. So she actually just stood outside with the protesters and was last seen chanting, you can stick your climate crisis up your ass." <laughs> It does, feel like it's a bit, it does feel like it's a bit of... I know, I know what you was trying to say, but it does feel... You can shove your climate crisis up your ass. It feels like a U-turn on behalf of Greta Thunberg. It does. Actually. It's not on brand, is it? Are, are you no longer into the whole... No, 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 this climate crisis. Imagine if she's, just, up your ass. Uh, she's just there with a placard, be like, it's a hoax! It's a hoax! <laughs> I was wrong!
<laughs> it's a hoax. <laughs> but it, she's got to do that, because what happens... What I love Greta. What happens if she succeeds, right? What happens if we set these targets, we meet these targets, and we avoid a climate crisis? What does she do then? She's not been to school for six years. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. She's got Instagram waiting for her. Isn't that where everyone else goes, where they haven't been to school and they're just famous for being famous? <laughs> what, you think Greta Thunberg's going to end up being like, hey, guys, you can, you can get teeth whitener if you just use the code... <laughs> 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 yeah. Climate change is fine. <laughs> Greta's defence. I feel like I have to defend Greta, cos I think pretty much shoving anything up your ass will reduce emissions. Yes. <laughs> It makes perfect sense doing it in Scotland in general because the main group of people who don't want the planet to get 1.5 degrees hotter is gingers. <laughs> <laughs> and I go over to my ginger correspondent for confirmation. <laughs> Thank you for being an ally, Rhys. OK, at the end of this round, the points go to Maisie Hugh and Alistair. <laughs> now we play a round called COP26, a load of these. <laughs> this... <laughs> Game involves Ivo and Alistair. If you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please. And the topic is <laughs> class. Who wants to come in on that? Oh, good. Ivo. <laughs> I went to boarding school as a teenager. We did things differently there. Hello, old flame. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I studied for five years at uh, Eton College. Uh, not a popular school, but that's something I've mentioned in pretty much every stand-up bit I've ever done, because uh, as our headmaster always said, you've just got to own these things. Um, that was advice from a separate conversation about land, but uh, <laughs> still made sense. Um, I've been trying desperately, despite the school's reputation, to rebrand myself as a sort of likeable Etonian, uh, like the actor Eddie Redmayne, who feigned a disability for money. <laughs> um, it, in the film The Theory of Everything, I've, I've got no other evidence. Um, obviously, I'm not proud of everything the school stands for, but I'm grateful for the education I received. Uh, I've got friends that I made there, still got a lot of memorabilia from my time at Eton. I've got the Eton cufflinks, I've got the Eton tie. Got an Eden advent calendar. It's like a normal advent calendar, but all the doors are open for you by your father's contact. <laughs> <laughs> and even though I'm trying to move away from certain stereotypes, I'm aware I still completely inhabit them. Um, I've never met Boris Johnson, for example, but two years ago, I did actually take part in a Bulls tournament with his brother. That's a genuine anecdote from my life, not something <laughs> created by a posh twat auto-generator. <laughs> I played in a Bulls tournament with some friends. I wasn't expecting his brother, Joe Johnson, MP, to be there. I tried to defend this to a friend a couple of days later by saying, and I direct quote, I just didn't think it was going to be an especially posh Bulls tournament. <laughs> Probably the second most hateful thing I said in the chat after my friend said, what is Bulls anyway? And I said, oh, it's basically the same as Petonk. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have this prick on hand if you want French translated into different French. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK, that leaves us with Alistair. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And it's emotions. I'm not great when it comes to expressing emotions. Now, I don't know if this is because I have Scottish ancestry. No way! Yes, way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is because I was actually raised a sassy Catholic. I've looked at myself in the mirror and I think the reason I'm bad at expressing emotions is I don't have eyebrows on my face. <laughs> this is where they'd normally be on a human. It... And it's very difficult to express emotions without the basic facial equipment in situ. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what's wrong with his face. <laughs> Looks like someone put a wig on an egg. I... <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. It's, it's a troubling face. You know, I can't smile, really. My mouth is too little. If I want to smile, I have to deliberately raise my upper lip like a rusty medieval portcullis. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the face of a man expressing joy, that, is it? <laughs> At best, that's the face of a man trying to gauge the value of livestock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, she's a fine beast and no mistake. Give you 14 guineas, but not a penny more. 
<laughs> the only person in our house who's only good at expressing emotions is our Hoover. Like, when we're hoovering together, oh, he loves that, but he does not like to be left alone. Like, when we're together, it's like... <laughs> Friend did the introvert test on me recently, which is basically, would you rather be on your own in a room or in a room full of people all saying how brilliant you are? And if I'm being honest, my ideal situation would be a room full of people all saying how brilliant I am, but I'm not there. <laughs> I want it to happen, but I don't want to be present. And she said, that is awake. <laughs> Thank you very much, Okay, well done. Come on back. <laughs> Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical oh. image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, teams, what's going on here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I notice Angela Merkel's not wearing a poppy. Just saying. <laughs> Joe Biden wins flag hiding competition. <laughs> this is the uh, evolution of man from chimpanzee to Homo erectus. <laughs> it does look like Macron is at his graduation with his mum, granddad, and then his big brother who hit his head when they were kids. It's never quite, <laughs> never quite been the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the only times you'll see a full-length shot of Merkel because she doesn't like people knowing that one of her legs is slightly shorter than the other. Oh, my God! <laughs> Was the killer the American millionaire, the German scientist, the French philosopher, or merely a local simpleton? <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> he always looks like a, a, like a toddler who's been freaky Friday'd into an adult's body. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have the uh, correct answer? Macron has accused Boris of talking scallops. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. quite sort of half right. It's sort of half right. It's frustratingly sort of half right. Uh, do you want to give the correct correct answer? This has got nothing to do with the thing about fish, has it? it, it no, no it's, it? only it's, it's like I mean, you could have just said the sentence you just said and then shut up. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, they fucking edited you out of the film. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're, you're only even due to be killed, but yap, yap, no, yap. Okay. <laughs> tell, me, tell me again, what is the answer to this? Okay, Boris and Macron have got a dispute over fish. Absolutely right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, of course. This is Prime Minister Boris Johnson and French President Emmanuel Macron pictured at the G20 summit in Rome. So what row has flared up between the two countries? It's a row about illegal scallop dredging. <laughs> or, to put it more easily, a wham-bam clam scam. <laughs> <laughs> and the French have impounded a, a, a British trawler. Uh, yeah. Apparently, it's owned by a company called Macduff Shellfish, uh, which is <laughs> disappointingly the name of a company and not, as I had hoped, a Scottish clam. <laughs> <laughs> like a little tam shanter like, oh, they've got my boat. We'll deal with this, Macduff Shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Macduff Shellfish? <laughs> You're angry with it? This feels like a lot more stress than you bargain for when you get into fishing, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> this, this, they're at war. You get into fishing to have a nice relaxing time, I'll just take the boat out, sit there in silence, get away from it all. Next thing you know, you're waking up handcuffed in a war vessel with someone shouting poisson at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think the language, I think the language thing is the big problem because we've been having a big argument going back and forth between English and French, so it's a big sort of he said, she said, you said, they are saying... <laughs> 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 Moving on. Um, what environmental issue was the government forced to back down on recently? This is sewage, isn't it? It's sewage, yes. I can't be the only one that, that didn't know that sewage was pumped out into the sea and rivers. Like, when, when this story broke, I was like, oh, it's disgusting, there's poo in the sea. And then sort of pro read it properly and was like, oh, no, there's, there's more poo in the sea <laughs> than, <laughs> than usual. Well, worse than that, the sea is full of shit and we're arguing over who gets to keep the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is quite an impressive thing to say to the French. Oh, you want our fish? Oh, you want our fish? Yeah. We've shot on our fish. <laughs> <laughs> do you want them now, do you? 
I really enjoyed that the environmental agency is called Off What. Like, <laughs> rivers are full of what? <laughs> it does only happen during storms, though. To, we, but there is. But why would this? Why, this is meteorologically, to... they are shit storms. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound to me like it has been happening for years. Because sewage in the rivers does sound like a sequel to Wind in the Willows. <laughs> <laughs> They voted against it because Priti Patel doesn't know how to just put people off coming in the boats. Oh, if they see the poo, maybe they won't come. Like, why? <laughs> uh, you know the sewage news. Um, what surprised a man in Windsor earlier this year? I suspect it's going to be sewage. Yeah. Is it? OK, well, it is in sewage news. Uh, who came out of the, the sky? Poo came from, who from, came out of the, from sky? the sky? Who came from the sky? It was a plane, wasn't it? It, it was a plane. It dropped um, poo. Uh, over Windsor and it covered this man in his garden. I'm not... I know, I don't mean to laugh, but it, it, it's just... It's a good leveller, isn't it? Because... It, <laughs> it <laughs> pipes out enough shit, it can take some yeah. back. I understand <laughs> the narrative, Macy. As soon as I heard that story, I was like, yeah, typical boomer, got a garden. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think it's amazing, though, that, um... Windsor is just right next to Heathrow Airport. So, yeah. Yeah. so planes are like humans. They get to a point where they cannot hang on any longer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? It, well, and, the, and the pilot goes, I told you <laughs> to go before we left. Who <laughs> 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 and Windsor? Oh, oh I'm, I'm no. crossing my wings here. Uh, <laughs> you know, my, my mum's favourite game to play with me is um, it's called Bangers and Mash, and it's basically... <laughs> We just send each other <laughs> pictures on WhatsApp of train tracks um, and bangers is poo and mash is loo roll. Manchester Oxford Road is the best for bangers and mash. On, just all our photos, me and my mum, it's just where to find the best bangers and mash on network road. Maisie, so, <laughs> Maisie this is when you became Paddy McGuinness. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have to... Do you have to get the photo live? Or... No likey, no flushy. <laughs> Doesn't it come down as ice, though? No, it used to come down. Because it used, to, cause it used yeah. to be put into a blue liquid, blue and the blue ice. liquid freeze, and it would come down as a, as a block... If it ever came down at all, it came down as a block... Well, imagine being down. knocked out by a block of poo. Yes, people... <laughs> sorry, sorry. I know, I know I'm, I'm fairly young on this panel, but are you saying that when you were little, you used to dodge blocks of poo <laughs> falling, <laughs> falling from the sky? You'd hear, you'd hear it, then they did go... <laughs> <laughs> of, like, Dara with a basket in Ireland being like... <laughs> <laughs> I hate yeah, to keep yeah. coming back to it, but shat on to death would be such a better way for Hugh's character to have died. <laughs> <laughs> I came back round, the point to go to Ivo, Reese and Ria! Now we've come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read it this week's topics and we'll see what our panellists can come up with. Right, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear in hospital. I'm afraid you're going to inherit your father's low-functioning pancreas. Um, to be honest, he's written one of the weirdest wills I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be pleased with me, Doctor. I got clap. For the NHS. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to believe this. You're Grant in the Marvel comic universe. Sorry, I see you. She's in intensive care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're actually overstaffed this week. Why don't you take next Friday off? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I can't carry out surgery because I get so nervous I can't bend my fingers? Why don't you say that to my face? <laughs> Ah, I see where the confusion's happened. When I said that your grandma had been cured, I meant in the Italian meat sense. <laughs> Could you pass the focaccia? I... <laughs> I... I know you wanted your daughter to be here when you woke up, but that wasn't possible, I'm afraid, because we are still in the middle of the operation. <laughs> And if you just bend over, I'll pop my finger into your rectum. All right, well, how do you propose we kill time till the doctor can see her? <laughs> and it's now time to cut the umbilical cord. This is a weird way to open a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to hit your knee with this hammer. 
And if you don't pay, I'm going to hit the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our state-of-the-art technology, we can show you a mock-up of what you will look like in five years' time. Um, but this is just an X-ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time now to hear the baby's heartbeat, so uh, I'll just stick this stethoscope up your fanny. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious stuff. You're meant to say, welcome to accident and emergency, not A&E sports. It's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid your bill is £10,000, but to be fair, you have been parked here most of the day. <laughs> Mrs. McCready, your blood type is B negative, which is very much the vibe I'm getting from you. <laughs> <sighs> Let's call it. Time of death, 8 o'clock, Thursday. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let me explain. I put it up there for sex reasons. <laughs> Well, lesson learned. Never get in an argument with a plastic surgeon. I've just had my ass handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... Things a sports commentator would never say. And look at that. A hole in one. And that's the last time the Queen will sit in the front row of the javelin again. <laughs> <laughs> She's called one. <laughs> He's running up to the pole vault. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's a streaker. That is very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the Newcastle keeper has lost his head there. These new owners do not take defeat lightly. <laughs> and the bobsleigh is well underway, with three bobs dead and 12 wounded. <laughs> well, I hope this isn't the curse of the commentator, but Eorgil Balavantis, Satan <laughs> Rise! <laughs> He's gone with the left jab and the right jab, a flurry of jabs. Oh, my God, this vaccine rollout is going brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the final whistle. What an incredible game of find all my whistles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real game, I invented it. <laughs> Oh, yes, that is definitely a rebound. He's married her sister. <laughs> and we're here at the weigh-in for the women's boxing with Judith coming in at an appropriate weight and Michelle coming in at... Don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, which card is the referee going to get out? That is incredible. That is the one I thought of earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And look at him there, taking the knee. In the worst case of cheating the Paralympics has ever seen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to those who say that lacrosse is inaccessible to people from working-class backgrounds, I would say, guards, seize them! <laughs> <laughs> and they've scored with the last kick of the game and the manager is coming onto the pitch. We're all excited, mate, but that's a bit graphic, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here in Belgrade, the Serbian in lane one has opened up quite a gap on the Britain in lane two. Hardly surprising, lane one is EU passports only. <laughs> and, of course, Steve, both fighters have tested positive for ketamine, but the governing body has decided to let the fight go ahead because, well, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> And he's grappling with the tentacles, but can he hold on? This is one crafty arthropod. I've not actually seen Squid Game, but this is what I imagine happens. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, virgins. This is Robot Wars. <laughs> taken off him for, of course, for, for running by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> now, this American football position is called the tight end. Now, he can go long, he can go inside his man, he's a great ball handler. Sorry, I've got a bone, I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the end of that round. The points go to Ivo, Reese, and Ria. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Maisie Adam, Hugh Dennis, and Alistair Beckett King. <laughs> Commiserations to Ria Lena, Reese James, and Ivo Graham. Thanks for watching. I'm Darrow Green. Good night. Six degrees from stardom. Can Jamie and Spencer track down a Hollywood superhero? Download the app and listen to the pod on BBC Sounds. Meanwhile, over on iPlayer, Stephen Merchant's new one, The Outlaws. Seven misfits on community payback discover a stash of cash. Streaming now.